Hi, Melanie Minchinger here, illustrator for Gina K Designs. Today I have a new project for you with my newest set from Gina K Designs, Twine Time, and we're going to do some two-step stamping. I'll show you how to add just some very simple color and dimension to this old-fashioned clothespin, along with how you can shade the twine wraps on those. So very minimal supplies for this card, very quick. We're going to be using some of the Gina K Pure Luxury Base Weight White. This is four and a quarter by 11 inches scored at five and a half inches. This will fit in an A2 sized envelope and then a five and one eighth by three and seven eighth inch mat. That's just gonna layer right onto that. And white on white looks really sharp when you're doing your layering. So you can pop up this layer or you can just use regular tape adhesive so it's flat, but you still have that nice reveal and it looks really clean on a clean and simple card. The pads that I'm going to be using today, I've got the Gina K Craft and the Black Onyx. And then for the colored twines that I am going to be stamping, I'm using the Gina K Ocean Mist, Prickly Pear, Grass Green, and Red Hot. And then finally, I just have a few markers that I am going to be using for doing my shading on the clothespin. So I've got the EB1 and the EB2, a little bit of the GB8, and then the BG3 to do a shadow on everything. So let's begin by stamping. Even though I want the card to be oriented portrait style, I'm going to stamp it out landscape just because I find it a little bit easier with this clothespin. And you're going to need some acrylic blocks. Let's see, I want to use one. I think it's a little bit smaller for this. So I'll use that for my greeting. Okay, so I really like how this wooden clothespin looks with the craft ink. So I'm going to stamp these in craft if you want a more dramatic outline, you can use the black onyx. So I'm just gonna stamp one here, and then I'm gonna re-ink, and I'm gonna have these going back and forth. So up and down, just to make a more interesting layout. Sorry, I hit the edge of the stamp set there. Let me line this back up. Okay. And now we're going to do, let me get this out of the way. Now we're going to do this wrap that you can see. This is for that spool. So it goes right there. And so I'm going to do first the red. stamps on just like that and then I'm going to stamp this off and I'm going to do the green and I want these to go back and forth as well it'll fit either way but I just want to have that little string and going in a different direction just more interesting for the layout and then my ocean mist And finally, that prickly pear. Okay, so easy. Now I'm going to turn it and I'm going to use one of the greetings in this set. I'm going to make the thanks. So I have some thank you cards that I need to make after the holiday is over. And so, yeah, that will just fit actually on this smaller stamp. So let me look at this real quick. Yep, you can actually fit all of these words onto, I believe this is a two and a half inch block. But you can also use a longer one like you use for your borders if you like. So I'm gonna use the red just because that color pops the most. I wanna use one of the twine colors that I already chose just to tie that in. I'm just gonna stamp that right there in between the spools. And then I'm going to do the thanks so much that's in this set. So one of the little puns. And you can change it to just S-O much if you don't want to have it be a sewing themed card. And I'm going to use the black onyx and that really makes this one little bit pop out. So just pop it right there under the thanks. Okay, so that's all the stamping we're going to do. Now let's add some color and some shadows. And that's really going to make this come to life. So first I'm going to do my shadows here. 
and I'm just going to trace under each of the spools to make it look like they're just laying on a white tabletop. And then I'm going to go under this one. Now I don't want to do the top side of that thread because you're thinking about the light coming down. So it's always under the outline just to keep that consistent. And then I'll go back and do the greeting. Okay, and then let's do just the middle there where the top of that clothespin is casting a shadow on the inside, okay? And then I'm gonna go ahead and for all of these greetings, all you need to do is just trace right along the bottom outline of the script. Okay, and then you can trace inside the loops, the underside, and then maybe just a little bit of anything that's going across that would be casting a tiny bit of a shadow the way it's leaning over. Okay, so that's it for the shadows. And then what you can also do to make it look like this is wrapped around, it's not flat. So you can actually put just a little bit of color here on the bottom this bottom half of the twine on each side, and that really adds a lot. And you see how that just deepens the color? Okay, and see I want it to be white, th white twine with the colored stripes on it, so that's why I'm not using like a pink or a deeper shade of anything. You can just use this one shadow for all of that. Okay, now let's take the EB1, and this is the lightest one, and I'm just going to do, not even all of it, just on the sides. Actually, let me use my chisel tip since I'm doing a larger area here. And so I just quickly put that in because I like when there's a little bit of white showing through, like a highlight on that smooth wood. And you want to think about how it's going to be darker on the edges and then that white is going to come on the rounded part because that's where the light's hitting. And then let's take the EB2 and we'll put in some of that and that's just really warming up that wood and making it look more dimensional. So just hints of color. And then you could maybe do some tip to tip with this GB8. And I just want this on the very bottom to add that darkest brown. And you can put a little bit in just to kind of suggest the wood grain if you want, more towards the middle or the top. But it's done whenever you think it's done. Okay, and then I'm just going to use some foam squares to pop this up on my card. And if you want to use the little spool, there's a two-step spool that has the top and the bottom. You can see me stamp that in my first video for this set. You could do this in a landscape orientation. I'll show you in just a second when I mount it on the card. So that's a way that you could change up this design if you wanted to do it with the spool. And just center that. And the card is complete. I just love that white space. It looks great. But so for the little spool, if you wanted, you could have the spools dancing across in different directions and then have your long twine greeting going across the bottom. Thank you for watching this video today. I hope you see how easy it is to shade the different objects in this and as well as the words and two-step stamping that twine. So fun to have twine in any color that you want in all of these different bows, sentiments, and twine wraps. Thank you for watching my video today. Please visit my blog, Hands, Head, and Heart, for more ideas and inspiration. Visit us at Gina K Designs and Stamp TV. Thank you for watching today. God bless.